City. Oh, what a goal it is! Hello, everyone. My name is Brian C. Uh, Penang FC goalkeeper. Welcome to the Bola Bola Show. What's up, guys? It's the Bola Bola Show. I'm Elvin, and welcoming all of you to another episode we have on hand today. As usual, I'm not alone. Here, accompanied by my two buddies, Bala and Steven. So, hello, Bala. How are you doing, my friend? Hi, Elvin. I'm doing, doing good. Uh, today is a second day of MCO, so uh, things are kind of gloomy and gloomy. But I think the future is still there, and we still can uh, overcome this COVID uh, pandemic. And what about you, Steven? Hello, everyone. And uh, well, it's good to be back. Uh, this is our first episode of 2021. Uh, as you guys know that I'm in uh, essential service, so it doesn't make that much of a difference for me. I can still go to work, but I'm still working from home at the moment. Mm-hmm. But, uh, you know, I mean, let's, uh, I mean, of course, you know, as with the new CMCO, I mean, or MCO, whatever you want to call it right now, uh, you know, a lot of things have been put on hold, especially with the upcoming Malaysian football season. But that doesn't mean, you know, the conversation stops because in our show today, we have a special guest all the way from Penang, Mr. Brian C. Welcome to the show. Thank you very much, everyone. It's, it's a pleasure to be here. Okay. Um, all right. Bala, go ahead. All right. Okay. Brian, I'm tasked with the first uh, question. So are you ready? Yes. Of course, let's get started. <laughs> okay, yeah. so uh, I think it's just a basic question. Let's talk about a bit of the early years of football. Uh, how did you develop an interest in football? And uh, what stage in your life did you decide to pursue career as a professional football player? Because most of the players, especially coming from uh, Chinese background, Malaysia, prefer basketball. So it's very interesting <laughs> to you that you can share with us something. Yeah, 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 of course. Yeah, you're, you're, you're spot on on that. Um, I mean, I grew up in a typical Chinese family, you know, school always come first and anything else are just sort of like a recreational activity or a hobby. But my first exposure in football was, I think, uh, around nine years old. At the time, we had to move into our cousin's house because our house was under renovation. And he was a big Arsenal fan. He would be watching Premier League every weekend. And, mm-hmm. you know, me just being an innocent kid to see what he's watching and, you know, just started following, like, whatever he's watching on TV and football especially. And, you know, I just started, like, like the game a lot. Mm-hmm. Then eventually he, he found that I'm interested in this game. He bought me a Spurs jersey. Oh. But in fact, he's an Arsenal. <laughs> he's an Arsenal fan. So, okay. as I grow older, I realize that yeah, maybe he's just trying to like you know do, have a fun mockery out of it, <laughs> just like teasing a little kid who doesn't know about football and the London derby. He's like, oh, I'm an Arsenal fan. You just wear this like a uh, team that always get bullied in London, the jersey of it of that team. Yeah, yeah. So that was my first exposure in football. And ever since then, we just started going to the park and kick around. And eventually, you know, my mom saw that I have interest in football. She enrolled me in a few academies in Subang Jaya. Mm -hmm. The first one was Arsenal Soccer School. They had a training center in MPSJ. Mm -hmm. And then eventually that soccer school sort of like died down and I joined Brazilian football center in also in Subang Jaya. Yeah, so it all it all was always you know always like a recreational sport to me, where I only play in the weekends. It's like a proper academy where I go there and train every single day. You know, yeah. Mm-hmm. So and so, at what stage did you decided that you want to be a professional footballer? Oh right. Um, I think it was after my senior year at Johns Hopkins University mm-hmm. where you know I had a pretty outstanding season and I spoke to my coach like whether I should go for a shot in professional scene. He said that yeah, he absolutely thinks I should do it. 
So he at first tried to set me up with a few teams in the US, uh, in USL. Mm-hmm. So he had a few phone calls with like the coaches that he knows, but you know, eventually he came back to the news that I'm a foreign player. I won't be. They most of the teams are not looking to sign a foreign goalkeeper. Mm. So he advised me that if it's best that I start my career in, back in Malaysia. I see. I so see. I I called the coach who I knew before when I was playing for Perak under 21. Mm-hmm. And so happened they were in charge of PKNP, mm-hmm. right? The club they just folded last year. And they were competing in Super League. And they, at the same time, they were looking for a goalkeeper. So I sent them my videos. They sort of like had an evaluation and then they decided to offer me the contract and I had to pack everything that I had in the US for the past five years to go back and play for them, yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Of course, uh, we will get into further on your time in the US as well. But uh, before okay. that, you know, I just wanted to know, um, was it always your, was it always in your plan that you want to play as a goalkeeper or this was something that maybe in, in your past the coach felt that it was best for you? Um, no one actually told me to jump and go. It was merely like just pure instinct that I wanted to be a goalkeeper because I really like to save, mm. like the feeling of saving something. Mm-hmm. And, you know, like usually when we were young, we we're just kicking about. It's always like the bigger size or the tall person who was the goalkeeper, right? Yeah, but I wasn't I wasn't that at all. I was just a skinny lad and like not even tall, just like average height. And it just yeah, it just like comes from the instinct that I really like the feeling of saving, you know. But mm-hmm. and then when I sort of look past right now, when I was deciding what I want to do in my life, my top career choices had to do with something that involves the word save Mm s-a-v-e right so like i had a few career choices the first one was pilot which my parents really rejected it because of the you know like the unstable schedule the routine of flying Mm -hmm. and the risk of it but i like i like the feeling of you know flying around and making sure everyone's all safe to get to their own destination Mm-hmm. The second one was a uh, doctor. I always want to be a doctor to save someone's life, you know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And my final career that I almost ended up doing was a uh, civil engineer. Mm-hmm. So that's where we, you know, comes in and build something or design something that is safe for people to occupy. And yeah. Sorry for the long story, long-winded no. story. <laughs> okay. No, in- interesting enough. And that's how it led to you being a goalkeeper, saving goals, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So now I'm like, you know, my career choice is saving my team from losing. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And, uh, you know, uh, interesting enough as what you just uh, mentioned earlier about your years in the playing playing college soccer in the US, you know, you represented mm-hmm. uh, John Hopkins, and also University of California and Irvine. Uh, You know, for our listeners out there, some statistics to share with you guys. You know, Brian, during his time in the US, was actually ranked fourth in the school's history in career goals against average, second in save percentage, second in saves, fourth in games played, and third in minutes played, and also, of course, second in shutout. So, you know, you, you, you really had a very interesting career there, Brian. So, you care to share with us what happened there? Okay, uh, where should I start? University of California Irvine or Johns Hopkins? Because Johns Hopkins was the second part of my US career. The first mm-hmm. one is University of California Irvine. Yeah, okay. So per- perhaps you can start with that first. Yeah, and then you can go to John Hopkins. Yeah. All right, sure. Uh, well, at UC Irvine, um, how should I start? Let's just say I really wanted to go to the U.S. for college soccer. Mm-hmm. And even though I had already been offered a spot to be a medical student at IMU Bukit Jalil, um, that was what my mom really wanted me to do. But, you know, me just 
really love playing football or soccer. I really wanted to keep playing at a very good level. But at the same time, I didn't want to neglect my studies, right? I always wanted to find somewhere where I can get like a sort of like a football scholarship where I can just go there, play for the university at a very good level and then finish off my degree. And after A-levels, so I did my A-levels after high school and towards the final year of my A-levels, I decided that's what I wanted to do. So I took a year off and flew to the U.S. for like two months just to attend like a bunch of camps from the West Coast to the Midwest to the East Coast. You know, I just flew there all by myself just to put myself out there mm-hmm. so that I can be scouted by like coaches of colleges like or top universities or, you know, like just universities throughout the whole country looking for to recruit players. Yeah. That's how I met the coach at UC Irvine. So he offered me a spot in the team and I decided, yeah, that's where I wanted to go. Even though I have no idea how good the level was yet until I got there and I was really like shook. I wasn't even kidding because that level was something that I haven't experienced before. The speed of play was so much quicker than when I had like some training sessions with like Malaysian Super League teams. It was mm-hmm. almost like one step ahead. Mm-hmm. And I was just like, you know, not ready for this new environment, this whole new competition going on, right? So eventually, I didn't get a single playing time when I was there for a year and a half. And I decided what's best for me is to like look for a new opportunity. And so I started out like sending emails to different schools where, you know, like their football wasn't, they're not playing in a level where it's really, really good. Even like, um, how do I say this? Because like UC Irvine, these players, everyone there is looking to go professional, mm-hmm. either MLS or USL. Mm-hmm. And I had like five or six teammates now currently playing in MLS or USL, mm-hmm. which is the second division of American League. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so that just paints you like how good the level there is. And when I looked for an opportunity, I was looking more for a school that's more academic focus in terms of going there to get my minutes at the same time, having the opportunity to attend a very good school to finish off my degree, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so that's where I decided that I needed to make a move out and that's where I sent out emails to different universities like even top prestigious ones like MIT, NYU uh, Johns Hopkins is one of them and a few other like, colleges but eventually the coach from Johns Hopkins got back to me and said like yeah we really want you, when can you come I told him like I can come right away and that's how it happened yeah, mm-hmm. and 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 that's where you got all your playing time. Yeah, and when when yeah. when you okay okay, and and you know uh, earlier you did mention about uh, trying to get into the the professional league. How difficult is it to get into this MLS Super Draft? You know, is it is it you you need to be part of the top universities or anybody can just uh, apply to join or how 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 does it work maybe for 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 the US soccer side? Yeah, from my experience, mm-hmm. usually team i mean mls teams they will have scouts attending your games if they are interested in you you know mm-hmm. for example i have i saw when i was when i was not on the bench i was on the stands i saw a few coaches from like portland timbers seattle sounders mm-hmm. attending our game just to like scout a few of the players that they're interested in yeah mm-hmm. and i think it has to do with because most of the players, they grew up playing for these like MLS academies or reserve teams. So they are like sort of in the system. Okay. Um, mm. In the pool of players that they could recruit or scout or to follow their progress. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. 
And uh, of course, you know, after your time in the US, you came back to Malaysia and, you know, it was only in, in this year, 2020, whereby you finally had your major breakthrough with uh, PDRM. Uh, and of course, you know, when uh, a, lot of, a lot of fans, I remember, were, you know, talking about you, especially after that performance against JDT. I mean, it was a, it was a great performance, but, you know, I think... We just five minutes to go. JT scored the winning goal. Unfortunately, so they won the game. Otherwise, it could have been a spectacular 0-0 draw, which you were, I, would, I, I presume you were the man of the match. I'm not too sure about it. But how, how is it feels to finally be recognized for your ability and to be given the trust as a starting goalkeeper? <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, just a fun fact. I wasn't man of the match in that game because I think Diogo got it because he scored a winning goal. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, obviously, when looking back, how far I've come, you know, it's, it's really good. It's really good to see, you know, how much I've progressed because I, you know, throughout the whole years, I faced a lot of rejection and getting cut from teams or like coaches telling that you're not good enough or you're not tall, you're not tall enough to compete in this league. We are looking for a keeper, like maybe 195 or like 190 at least, you know, so yeah, you just got to keep working hard, putting a lot of effort to achieve where you wanted to be. And, you know, that's sort of like what I had to go through. And obviously, not forgetting that you have to believe in your own self, that you have what it takes to compete in the top division of Malaysian Football League. Yeah. And I also have to be thankful to the PDRM's uh, head coach, because like uh, and towards the end of 2019 season, I wasn't sure if they want to renew my contract, but the head coach just gave me a call and told me that, you know, I watched a few of your games and you're the first player that I called and I re- you're the first player that I want to lock down to secure and convince me that, you know, we will have good time together you know playing under him and yeah that's when I decided that yeah he's gonna make me the first choice keeper and I'm not gonna turn that off for town mm-hmm. so that's where I decided that this is the best for my career to stay in PDRM for another year in 2020 yeah mm-hmm. okay mm-hmm. okay Nazmi Faiz bijak untuk melepaskan diri dari Nazmi hantar dan rendah apakah bola terkena tangan keeper misal dari pengadil memberikan sepakan penalti kepada Johor Darul Ta'zim your goal diselamatkan oleh Brian C uh, Brian, despite all this effort uh, PDIM were indeed relegated in the what relatively uh, short season due to the COVID-19 pandemic uh, okay. In your opinion, yeah. had he been a full fledged season, do you think they could have survived in the Super, Super League? Yeah, for sure. I definitely believe that we would have a better chance to stay in the league in the 2020 season. Mostly because um, PDRM was going through sort of like a transformation period where a lot of the players from the previous season left. And the only single like public players, like non-police officer player that remained was, was me alone. And, you know, they brought in a few young players and the remaining are like police officers. And when it comes to the foreign players quota, we were only able to register three foreign players. And one left throughout uh, in the midst of the COVID so he went back to UK and decided not to come back to join us. So it was like a mutual agreement and we were only left with two foreign players competing against with every team that have like five players, five foreign players and, you know, maybe like one or two naturalized players. Mm, okay. So, you know, like that just shows that we have some sort of numerical disadvantage. But if we have the second window where we can bring in players you know, like just strengthen up our squad depth. I'm pretty sure we have a good fighting chance to like scrape out some results against teams in the league and, you know, eventually claw our way out of the relegation zone. Yeah, for sure. Because I believe as well, 
what the head coach is trying to like how he wants us to play and the way that he structured his team is good enough for us to remain in the league but we just don't have the right players to do it at the moment yeah mm-hmm. and, and what were you doing throughout, throughout that uh, lockdown period i mean how do you keep yourself focused and fit during that time i mean if if you are not where you want it to be then you always have the motivation to do something to keep always you know improve yourself be stronger be faster be more explosive especially if you're like a shorter goalkeeper mm-hmm. so that's mainly the part of my like a lockdown plan to you know like do research do like self studying on how to jump higher how to sprint faster to make up like your height deficiency deficiency sorry mm-hmm. so i mean yeah at, at, On my leisure time, I would just spend more time with my father and mom and at home. We were just like watching Netflix together and relax. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. And um, you know, even though yes, PDRM were relegated, uh, but you know, from the conversation that I have with people in Twitter and Facebook, especially among the Malaysian football fans, you know, they really gave mm-hmm. a lot of praise for your effort. You know, you were regarded as one of the best players in the team. So. Did the national team coach Tan Cheng Ho sort of, you know, contacted you, you know, gave you some piece of advice to keep up his performance? Maybe, you know, a call could be on, on, the, on the rise soon? Well, to be honest with you, I haven't received a phone call from him. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, that could only mean one thing, that I'm still not good enough to deserve a call up to the national team. Mm-hmm. But, You know, I've heard from different coaches that yeah, they're looking at you. Just, just keep performing well. But unfortunately, when the lockdown stopped and everyone's allowed to train again, I sort of you know got too excited to return to playing, and you know having the news that you know the national team coach is watching or like you're under the radar. Mm-hmm. I just sort of, you know, like forget about everything and just like kept pushing myself hard, like beyond the limit. And then that's where I tore my hamstring. So I was out for a month and I missed, I missed like the restart of the league. Oh. And then, when, yeah, when I, when I come, when I was about to return, I sort of, you know, came back too early. And I tore the same hamstring again, Ouch, okay. same area. Yeah, <laughs> so I was out for another month hmm. and a half until like there was two more games left to be played. But it was sort of like too little, too late because you were just watching a team losing every single game, and there's nothing you can do by just sitting on stands and like cheering for them every single game, but. It was just like a really painful time to, to to watch because you know if you were on the field, maybe the results could have been different, right? But you know it was just like a painful period that I had to go through to watch my team sort of like kept losing every game. And by the time when I was fit to come back, um, we were already relegated. Mm-hmm. And the first game that I returned to was a uh, 7-0 bashing from Selangor, okay. right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, you know, because we lost the game before against... The game before that, we lost against Turangano, I think it was 3-0 or 4-0. I can't remember the score line, yeah. So the coach sort of like... Um, I just say that he wanted a new keeper to go up against Selangor. So he and I spoke for a bit and I told him, yeah, I'll be ready. Even though I would only train, like have a full training session with the whole team, like two days before the game or three days before the game. And, you know, like I missed the whole pre, like sort of like the return preseason where teams get some friendly matches to, you know, have the match fitness back again. 
but I miss all of that and miss a lot of like two months of training sessions and only trained for like three days and I was just being thrown in goal. I was ready then, you know, but still, yeah, it wasn't the best performance, but I feel like I could have done a lot better for sure if I had like the proper preparation going into the game. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, you know, uh, Brian, uh, now now perhaps let's let's talk about your playing style because nowadays, you know, goalkeepers are not so conventional anymore as the goalkeepers mm-hmm. used to know those days, you know, where the ball comes, they either make a save or they hoof the ball up. So, what 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 sort of how do you describe your playing style, you know? Are you more of the old school goalkeeper or are you more of those those sweeper keepers or the possession keepers that we see nowadays where are also involved in starting an attack? Yeah. Right, right, of course. Um, so I, I really developed myself as sort of like the modern day goalkeeper when I was in Johns Hopkins mm-hmm. because my head coach was a huge, huge fan of Pep Guardiola. Ah, so oh, so okay. so so yeah. now we get that angle. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Right. So you know where I'm going, right? Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. that's the reason why Pep Guardiola would spend so much on goalkeepers and like kick out the best keeper in England, like Joe Hart. Okay, Mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Um, So that's where I really learned um, how to build up from the back. And so, yeah, I would describe myself that I'm more of a possession goalkeeper, not so much in sweeping, like a Manuel Neuer kind of like crazy Mm -hmm. (laughs) sweeping goalkeeper coming off the line and try to tackle the player and stuff like that. I see. Mm-hmm. So, so, and 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 this is this this was also due to a strong emphasis they put during your college days training, right? So, so is, yes. is there a, a certain system? For example, now if you get a goalkeeper out there that that would 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 like to change his style or something like that, are there any tips or something you can give those young goalkeepers? Maybe. Yeah, I mean, first of all, you need to be really comfortable with the feet. Mm-hmm. Right, like receiving back passes or like shitty back passes from your teammates. Yeah, you know? yeah. Oh yeah, I have a lot of experience in that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm sure every single goalkeeper had that experience. <laughs> and then terrible back pass. And I, and I get panic. <laughs> yeah. And then like, sometimes, sometimes it's not just a back pass. The field condition, if you have a bump and that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's 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 sort of like what I really dislike in Malaysia. Yeah. <laughs> our pitch most of the stadiums are not yeah proper grass i'm sure you all know about this already yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. only a few stadiums in malaysia have the, the real grass to play beautiful football on yeah 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 so i think my advice would still be go get a ball and find a wall and just to like keep passing ball onto the wall control mm-hmm. your right play with your left and don't neglect your weak foot, whichever it is, right mm-hmm. or left. Mm-hmm. So uh, that's where I sort of like, I spent a lot of time when I was in Johns Hopkins. There, they have like a few like indoor arena where there's like just walls that I can just smash the ball at, you know, like hundreds of times. And I have time to do that. That's how I sort of like, you know, develop my technique of my first touch and and my sort of like distribution, yeah. Mm, okay, mm-hmm. let's talk about team tactics because uh, usually when it comes to the what there's a defender, there's a midfielder, and forward, and even like you say, Pep Guardiola, I think a lot, a lot of movement is around uh, this this uh, four, or would I say this three three area of uh, playing football. So mm-hmm. does a goalkeeper get involved in this, this process? Is it more like uh, you know set up because? A goalkeeper is meant to stop the ball and maybe like kind of in modern era is more like a sweeper kind of role. But how does a goalkeeper actually involve in the total overall of a football winning team? Yeah, yeah. So I mean, first of all, you have to look at whether you have possession or not. Let's just start with when the team has possession, right? You always want to scan how the opponents press you high up, whether they press you or not. Okay, if they don't really press you, then it shouldn't be an issue for us to build up from the back. But when they start pressing us high up, you can sort of like, you know, if they throw three strikers at you to press your back four and your keeper or four players, 
that's when you need to know that you know we have to like look beyond the first line, which is like your your back four. You have to like sort of look for the wing wingers on on the side of the field, high up the pitch, where you can just clip the ball to them, so that they could you could just like bypass two lines of pressure, and you know go straight to attacking their 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 back line, which is one one single pass. And uh, that's that's just when you have possession, okay. But you always have numerical advantage when you have the ball at your feet, because you always have four four defenders and you. So that's five players against maybe they throw three strikers. It will be like a five v three kind of situation. So there's always a way that you could like sort of build up from the back, depending on how the team set up to do it. All right. Not every single team wants to play a beautiful game like Jurgen Klopp or Pep Guardiola does. Yeah, but if let's say like when you're out of possession, then I think you need to always constantly be reading how the opponents play and how you position yourself with the back four. Okay, you don't want to be too far away that any ball click towards click behind your your back four and. It's like a 50-50 ball that you couldn't get it to and your defender couldn't get it. But the striker is the one who ended up taking the ball and scoring the goal. So it's like a lot of game reading and that would help by watching a lot of your opponent's game film and the way they play. Yeah. Yeah, because I was in the, during the ICC tournament in Singapore. Uh, okay. Towards, yeah. the, towards the end of the second half, the game only finished. Uh, during this, mm-hmm. he uh, lost the player towards in the half field, and Harry Kane uh, without second thought, he just kicked the ball and uh, lobbed over what they call that uh, uh, the oh, sectioning right. goalkeeper, during this goalkeeper. So basically, what I'm trying to say is, he the striker was keep on uh, looking at the goalkeeper, what how was positioning during the game play. So I think being keeper, I think this 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 play a lot of crucial movement right? because it cannot be too far up and also cannot be too far down as well. Right? Yeah, 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 of course. So. Ideally, you don't want to be chipped over from like halfway of the field, right? That's like the worst case scenario for any single goalkeeper. So you always have to like read when a striker is about to launch a 50 yard uh, strike in your own goal. Then that's where it's like a cue for you to like sort of retreat a little bit so that you can get to the ball that is playing above your head. Yeah. Okay, now, and of course, uh, for the uh, 2021 Super League season, you'll be playing for Penang FC. So, you know, what made you opt to sign for them this season? Yeah, of course. Um, when the season, when the 2020 season ended, the, the first team that came to me was Penang. And they even, the goalkeeper coach even approached me for the 2020 season. Mm-hmm. Toward, that means like towards the end of 2019, we've been in touch and they expressed the interest for me to come over as well. But because for the 2020 season, Penang was playing in the second division and I really wanted, uh, you know, sort of like establish myself in the first division. Mm-hmm. So I decided to stay with PDRM and turn Penang FC down. But when Penang got promoted, when they won the second division and got promoted and when they came to me again, they really showed even more interest where they just been reaching out to me every single day. Mm-hmm. You know, like they're just catching up on me and asking me, have I made up my mind? Is this offer good enough? So that's where the negotiations kept going on for like about two weeks. Mm-hmm. And yeah, we finally came to an agreement which they are willing to, you know, offer me what I wanted to come over here and play for them. And so I agreed to join them. Yeah. Okay, that's that's fantastic. And, you know, since we are speaking of Penang now, so, you know, what, what are Penang's targets for the coming Super League season? And what are your own personal goals with them? Yeah, so I think if Malaysian football fans are, have been reading press, uh, the president have been setting a target of top six Mm, okay. So we want to finish top half of the table, you know, mm. sort of establish ourselves in the top tier as a newcomer of the league, 
not just like a one season wonder and then drop back in the Premier League. Wow. Okay. Okay. Right. Yeah. So you can see their their real like focus with the kind of players they are signing for this upcoming season. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. And obviously, like my personal goal is definitely to help them to achieve what they wanted to, or maybe even go up higher than what we were expected. You know, like maybe even competing for AFC Cup spot, right? Mm-hmm. That will be like sort of like the icing of on the cake, something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Let's let let let's hope to see back the glory days of Penang. You know, I I remember the Murzagwa Abdul Razak days of Penang, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That. Back, 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 back in the nineties and early two thousands, yeah. So anyway, okay. Yeah. And and yeah. Uh, I, I, of course, uh, you know, we know that Penang just recently signed. Uh, I mean, Indonesian international uh, Ryuji Utomo. So you know, mm-hmm. what has it has been like uh, training alongside with him? I mean, what can you share with us about him? I mean, yeah, he's a he's a true professional. You know, he came in really fit mm, and. Okay. Everyone was sort of like, um, I was inspired by the level of fitness that he brings, not just in terms of like, um, cardio, mm, okay. also in terms of his physical strength and how comfortable he is with the feet. Because we have a new coach and he won us to play off from the back. Okay. Okay. So I think having him as an as an addition as in the center back position really helps with that the mm-hmm. style of play, right? Oh. Yeah. Okay. And, and of course, you know, as a promoted team, and as you mentioned earlier, that Penang target is to finish among the top six. Uh, do you think that so far the preparation that they have undertaken, you know, is uh, preparing them to face the challenge in the Super League this year, or you think there's still more to be done? Well, I mean. From my first day of joining them, you know, everyone seems very enthusiastic about this new challenge ahead. You know, everyone's always working hard, pushing themselves. Mm-hmm. And when a new coach came in and joined us, uh, like two weeks after the preseason, he expressed his uh, style of play, and the players seems to be in agree uh, agreement with that style of play, like the modern football attacking way you know like a ball on the ground no high ball this kind of sort of like quote-unquote beautiful football right and yeah the players the local especially local players they really like what they are seeing so far and they are doing their best to you know comply to what he needs from every single player not just the striker it goes on to every single position Mm-hmm. where we need to fulfill what he needs in order to play this attacking style of football. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. Right. Okay. So, uh, you know, Brian, you know, historically, there have been many great ethnic Chinese players, you know, to name a few, you know, So Chin An, James Wong, Yap Wai Lun, Lim Tiong Kim. And of course, you know, since we are talking to you and you being a goalkeeper, you know, we can't forget the legend Chow Chi Kiong. But you yeah. know, but but these days, you know, it's a real rarity to find Chinese footballers in Malaysia. You know, what 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 do you think is the reason behind this? Oh, this is a really really hard question. <laughs> okay, <laughs> a tough one. Mm, <laughs> I can only speak from my experience. Okay, I'm yes, not sure, generalizing sure, yeah. it from like every single Chinese people out there. Um, well, you know, personally, growing up from a like a very academic focused family, professional sports is like not even in consideration. Um, and I'm pretty sure that a lot of my peers face the same issue where to go into professional sports at the same time, they are like having a dilemma whether to pursue some other career, which could be more stable and more lucrative. So it's like a trade off between which path you wanted to take. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, but for me, I always think that we can, we can always have the best of both worlds. Like we don't need to neglect one aspect for the other. We can always find some way that 
if we want to be a professional athlete, we can have a career path where we can finish our higher education, have a degree for a backup or just something for you to use when you retire from playing professional sports, mm -hmm. right? But yeah, I feel like most of like my Chinese peers, they think that football is not a stable career. It's not well paid, um, which which could be true because you know, like given this this whole uh, like ecosystem that's not very conducive for players to come in here and have a like like a lucrative career that they can save up enough for starting their own business in the future. You know, we can see a few teams are struggling financially, mm -hmm. and you know having depth from years and years ago but I mean at the end of the day if if you really want to do something I believe that if you put in all your heart and effort you can get the best out of what you wanted to do mm -hmm. yeah okay yeah uh, I think uh, on the positive side what do you think could be done to attract more uh, Chinese players to be involved in this uh, nation football, especially as uh, we go more talented, because I think the schooling level, I think there is a kind of uh, movement or a lot of players coming in. But as and when, I think when they come teenager and subsequently when they come to go to college, it's, it's tips. So, is there anything can be done to attract more players? Yeah, I think uh, definitely we need to have more outreach program especially to like these um, SJKC schools, you know, like the Chinese elementary school and Chinese high schools. They need more exposure in terms of what a football career is like. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because I have known a lot of, actually, I have known a lot of like really talented football players who are Chinese and they were just like sort of stuck in a position where whether they want to pursue a professional football career, which is on the table for them, right? Or whether they want to focus on um, studies or, you know, even some some cases where they have like a family business waiting for them to, to like take over. So they decided that, yeah, I'll just be sort of like a... Uh, respectful son or, or daughter and you know take up the family business and turning down this uh, football opportunity that comes to them because I think this football opportunity only comes once in a lifetime if you don't do it now then you might not have a shot to come back in again mm -hmm. because how competitive it is this whole environment is just so so cutthroat that if you're out for one season, it's very, very unlikely that you come back in for another season once you take the gap year. Mm -hmm. you, guys, you guys know what I mean, right? Mm -hmm. yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. I mean, we understand, then, we understand football career is a relatively short career. And of course, yeah. you know, players or anyone who has aspiration to become professional football players have to make the best out of it. Yeah, it's understandable. Yeah, of course. Mm -hmm. And then uh, talking about Brian for the record, uh, he's a dean list for this uh, for civil engineering in my company. Wow. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Okay. Now, so you know, let's put up the let's put the serious questions aside and let's talk about something a little bit more fun. Something I'm trying to get uh, trying to get to know Brian more on a personal level. So here's what we're gonna do, Brian. We're gonna ask you very straightforward questions. Just answer the first thing that comes out of your mind within five seconds. Is that okay with you? Okay, sure. Let's go. All right. First up, favorite food. Ooh, I will have to go for chicken rice. Okay, mm. there you go. All right. Yeah. All right. So next up, Brian, what's your dream holiday? I mean, e even in this season. <laughs> <laughs> dream holiday in this season is different than dream holiday without the season. Okay, let's say dream holiday without COVID. Okay. Um. Definitely Palawan, Philippines, or Bali, Indonesia. Mm. Okay, okay. Yeah. Interesting. All right. So, your all-time favorite movie? All-time favorite movie. 
Shawshank Redemption. Oh, okay. Ooh, good, good. Wow, good. wow, nice. Okay. Classic, and, classic. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. And uh, okay, what, 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 what about uh, any funny teammates? Who's your funniest teammate? The one full of banter. Oh, this one would have to go for Latif Swami or Achong, which is Azrin. Azrin, I don't remember the last name. Yeah. And and, and PDRM guys. PDRM guys, uh, definitely. Oh, okay. Either... Oh, the ones you mentioned are the Penang guys. Okay. Yeah, yeah, the, the Penang oh, guys. Yeah. Okay. All right. oh, okay. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. Last but not the least, uh, most memorable football moments. Least memorable football moments. Most, most, most. most. The least, most. The, the most. Most. Uh, most. Sorry. I mean, what is <laughs> your favorite <laughs> moment in football? Uh? Oh, okay, okay, okay. Okay. <laughs> uh, this is hard to pick. I would definitely say that's two. Okay, one in the US, one in Malaysia. The mm-hmm. Malaysian one, obviously, the games against against JDT, You know. Okay. Put up like twelve saves and one penalty save in the game, but we still lost in the end. Um, so it could go right up to when I was playing for my Johns Hopkins University team, where we made it far into the national competition. You know, breaking every single record the whole season that is there to break in terms of defending and goalkeeping statistics. Yeah, it will be this too. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. All right. So, guys, uh, any last questions for Brian? Yeah, I I have one. You know, just just since you're a goalkeeper, Brian, uh, any role model of a goalkeeper you you have in mind? You you looked up to this guy as an idol. Yeah, definitely. Um, Your all-time favorite goalkeeper? Who's that? Oh, all-time favorite will be Iker Casillas. Oh, ah, okay. Okay. Yeah. Nice. Nice. Because you know he's like me, you know, not the one nine zero keeper, just mm-hmm. short edge on quick reflexes. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Great leadership as well. Won every single competition there is to win. Yeah, what a leader. Yeah, indeed. Mm-hmm. Yeah. True. True. Indeed. Okay. How about you, Bala? Any question? Uh, for me, uh, nothing much. But thanks, Brian, for coming to our show, and uh, may you have a successful career in this uh, upcoming uh, season and uh, future season as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, thank you very much, Bala. It's been a uh, Pleasure talking to you guys. Yes. Yeah. Thank you so much, Brian. Really, thank you. I wish you, wish you all the best in your Penang career, man. Yeah. Sure. Okay. Thank you very much, Alvin. Yeah. And and of course, uh, same as well for me. Uh, best of luck with your career with Penang, and uh, you know, hopefully, we will have some uh, good news uh, with uh, with regards to the MCO, especially with the football trainings. Hopefully, uh, you know, not just Penang, but every team can resume back their you know their preparation, and let's hope there is football for us at the for the coming season. And once again, thank you, Brian. And thank you for being in our podcast. Yeah, sure. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Stephen, especially for organizing this. Uh, it right. was really good. Because okay. it'll be my first first podcast experience. So we'll see. Hopefully well, there'll be more to come. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, well. Uh, for the record, uh, you are the first ever professional Malay- uh, in our Malaysian Football League who has agreed to become an op- a guest in our podcast. So... Th- that's oh okay <laughs> so thank you for that as well no yeah problem. it's an honor it's, it's an honor it's a first for both of us yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah it's a, it's a huge pleasure and an honor for me as well like okay. I'll, I'll always like to speak about my experiences and hopefully this could you know probably inspire more younger generation or you know give some sort of i don't know like motivation and yeah, inspiration awesome. for yeah. other footballers yeah mm-hmm True, true indeed. Okay, everyone. And with that said, we will end this week's episode of the Bola Bola Show. Bye for now.